So the other day, my husband and I were in the house and it was late in the evening and we had just put our babies down for the night. So they weren't good and sleep yet. And my husband was very noisily walking around the house, taking care of a few things, but he was being extremely loud about it and just not trying to do anything quietly. Now, while I could appreciate the things that he was doing, I was like, love, why are you being so loud? And he responds, I'm working. Quiet is for broke people. So we both laughed and I thought, wow, now that'll teach. So here's the question I want you to ask yourself. When it comes to the communication in your relationships, are you quiet and broke or are you putting in work? Hi, welcome to You Can Talk. I'm Ruth Finney and this is a channel solely dedicated to helping you talk your way to healthier relationships. Whether you're married or dating, or if you're struggling to communicate with family or friends or people you work with, then this is the channel that will help you experience some real change. If you're willing to put some simple principles into practice, become a part of this talk community by subscribing to You Can Talk and meet me here on Tuesdays for talk tips and Thursdays for talk lessons. And walk with me through the user's manual as we discover some revelations in communication that you can incorporate into your life so that you can talk your way to healthier relationships. One of the biggest misconceptions of any healthy and lasting relationship that I hear people say is that it shouldn't be this hard. If it was meant to be, everything would just flow easily and naturally. It shouldn't feel like work. And all I can do is laugh and think to myself, that is exactly why you're struggling. Because any healthy relationship you're striving to have requires work. Don't be fooled by these people who've worked together for years and seem to have never had an issue with each other or been married for decades and always seem to be so happy or been friends for a lifetime and seem to have never have had a falling out with each other. Believe me when I tell you, if it has lasted for more than a minute, someone has been putting in some work. All healthy relationships require work, period. And if you're not ready to put some work into a relationship, you'll always be broke. So maybe you're slightly confused and aren't sure if you're actually broke. So let's go over how to know if you're experiencing this mind state. If the communication in your relationship is broke, then you probably becoming resentful of the relationship. Wondering if you made the right decision entering into a work partnership, a romantic relationship, or even a friendship with this person. Maybe you're already thinking and looking for ways you can get this person out of your life because you've already decided this is too hard and you didn't sign up for this and you just don't think it'll work out. And that may be the case, but before you go throwing in the towel, let's just make sure we've put in all the necessary work so that if we do part, we can be in complete peace about it and not end up in a vicious cycle. The second way to know if the communication is broke is when you're raising barriers when they want to talk. If your work partner, your friend, or the one you love comes to you trying to figure out how you all can work through the things you're struggling through, or vice versa, you go to them. And every time you try to have a conversation, you can feel the barriers being raised. There's an unwillingness to be available. And when you're together, no one is listening to what's being said. Or if you do manage to talk, everyone is in defense mode rather than acknowledging the problem or accepting their role in it. Maybe there's an unwillingness to cooperate or find compromise, or maybe one of you has already checked out, packed their bags, and jumped ship. These are all levels of being broke. The next and sometimes more subtle way of being broke is when you're okay with the status quo and never growing. Here's the honest truth. If no one is being challenged to do more or give more or grow more or achieve more on some level, then you're dying. There's no homeostasis when it comes to the health of a relationship. If you talk to anyone that's been working together, friends forever, or loving each other for long periods of time, they will always tell you how the relationship has had to evolve over the years in order to survive. The only thing that's constant in a healthy relationship is the fact that it must grow. 
Circumstances change, roles advance, maturity levels evolve, personalities develop, responsibilities expand. And if we continue to work together through these challenges, the bonds will deepen. But if we don't find ways to work together, we will grow apart. And that's just the harsh reality of it. Now, the work can get easier over time when no one is slacking and everything becomes routine, but the work is still present. After a while, it just begins to feel less like work when you become more and more of a team. The fourth way to know you're broke is when someone is always keeping up mess. There is nothing more exhausting than always having to deal with mess. It drains you mentally and emotionally, physically, and honestly, it's just a tactic of the enemy to keep us distracted from whatever it is we're supposed to be doing. Think about it. If the enemy can keep mess going on in our lives, then he can keep our focus away from the things that are important and will never accomplish the purpose and the plans that God has for our lives. The last way to know if your communication is broke in a relationship is if we're already entertaining others. If you find yourself having more and more conversations outside of the person you're working with, romantically partnered with, or friends with, then things are broke. And rather than communicating with the person we're in relationship with, we're already trying to work our way into a new one. And this is happening when we find ourselves having more and more frequent texts, phone calls or meetups with this new person we're trying to entertain. But if we're honest with ourselves, we're really just trying to see if there's less work involved in being in a relationship with this person than the one we're currently in relationship with. That's all we're doing. Just trying to figure out where we can get the most benefits for the least amount of work. And that mentality doesn't make for a long lasting healthy relationship. But here's the thing that most people don't realize because they never allow themselves to get to this phase of the relationship. If you're willing to put the work in early on, eventually the communication in the relationship will begin to run itself and it won't always feel like work. And that's the phase we see these long-term happily ever after relationships in where they've already put in the work and now it's running on cruise control and we think it should always be that easy, but it wasn't. We just may not have seen those working years, the years of weathering the storms, the years of overcoming the obstacles, the years of reasoning through the differences and how they had to work through their own selfish desires to keep the relationship first. I promise you, if you have a conversation with anyone who's been in any type of long lasting relationship, ask them, what kind of work did you all have to put in in order to make this thing last this long? And I'm very sure that you'll be amazed at the things that come out of their mouths. Listen, being quiet in a relationship gets you nowhere. If the thoughts are never expressed or words are never spoken, if uncomfortable conversations are never had, or if differences of opinion are never worked through, then someone in the relationship is not being their authentic selves because two people can't agree on every single thing, how things should be done, what approach should be taken or the best plan of action. Someone is always going to feel differently about something and that's healthy. If we were all exactly the same, we couldn't challenge each other to grow and live out our God-given purpose here on this earth. Our manufacturer designed us to bring out the gifts within each other. We have to learn how to see value in every relationship we're involved in and be willing to put in the work to get out of it everything we're supposed to get out of it. Now, that doesn't mean it may not ever end, but when it does and if it does, we have to make sure that it transitions according to our manufacturer manufacturer's plans and not our own plans. In our user's manual, Moses was in relationship with the Israelites because God gave him an assignment to release them from slavery. Now, you would think that they would have been gracious and thankful and willingly cooperative that someone was coming to rescue them. But Moses had to put in time and he had to put in work when it came to the Israelites. He couldn't afford to be quiet and broke. He didn't have the luxury of becoming resentful. He couldn't have convinced them that he was sent by God. God and that they needed to follow him if there were raised barriers between them. And if he was okay with the status quo, he would have never sought God for direction. And they may have been wandering around those 40 years in the wilderness forever. 
He didn't allow the Israelites to keep up mess. He challenged them to trust and follow God's commandments. And just as Moses began to entertain and act upon his own thoughts, rather than trusting and following the instructions of the manufacturer, he was able to see the promised land, but he was prevented from moving into the promised land. Just like Moses, we often miss moving into the promised land of our relationships because as soon as we're challenged, we jump ship and yell, abort, abort, someone please rescue me. Moses was challenged by the Israelites daily, but he had to weather the storms, overcome the obstacles, learn how to reason through their differences and keep his relationship with the Israelites and with God as his first priority. Yes, there were good times. Yes, there were tumultuous times. Yes, there were even times of triumph and discouragement. There were times he felt defeated, times he got angry and experienced disappointment, but he stayed in it until the manufacturer brought the relationship to an end. The manufacturer transitioned the Israelites to the land of promise, but he transitioned Moses to a place of rest. Putting ongoing work into a relationship doesn't have to feel like being a Hebrew slave. When we trust God and follow his ways, even when it doesn't make sense, or even when we can't see how things could possibly work out, or think that there's no way that we should have to be putting in this much work, stay the course and watch how he provides. Watch how he opens doors. Watch how he knocks down the barriers and heals the broken parts in our relationships. If you can relate to any or all of these communication struggles and are tired of the seemingly endless cycle of communication barriers that are keeping you from the relationships that you desire to have with others, then become a talker. Subscribe to You Can Talk. Select that notification bell down below and meet me here on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next episode where we'll be discussing more ways that we can talk our way through these trying times. Leave a comment below and let me know what you're willing to communicate to working on. Whatever it is, I'm rooting for you and praying for you because you can tame the tongue, approach with compassion, listen deeply, knock down the barriers, and talk your way to healthier relationships. Let your communication be the light of God's love the world so desperately needs to hear. Thanks for watching and if you would please like and share this video and I will see you here next Tuesday and Thursday.